Star Slammer is a 1986 action sci-fi film from director Fred Olin Ray. The movie opens in space prison. I mean, sexy space prison. The evil muffin is sticking gummy dinosaurs to this prisoner's back. If the Ilsa films ever made it to the 80s, I imagine they'd look a lot like this. The mouse droid tells the prisoner it's time for a torture-style C. Then in walks Isaac Clark from Dead Space. Okay, it looks like style C is for hot coals. Does that mean they're going to run through the whole alphabet? When they get to H, are they going to make her eat haggis? Those monsters! Then we cut to the theme for Raiders of the Lost Ark. They changed this just enough to not get sued. Dawn Wildsmith, Bobby Breezy, Michael Sonny, it's like a mini Surf Nazis prequel. Please tell me Gail Neely's in this too. Oh, what I wouldn't give for Mama Washington in space. I can't decide on a title for this movie. Let's call it The Adventures of Tara, Prison Ship Star Slammer. Hey, uh, how about just Star Slammer? Okay, fine. Chapter 1 Death on Planet Arrows. Greg Brady's UFO is landing on the planet. This attracts the attention of the local Amish population. Two sons? They must have mistaken this for that other star movie. It's... Monty Payton's Flying Circus! The old guy's traveling along and is stalked by, uh, these guys. I don't know if I'm supposed to be afraid or not. The old man reveals he's on a mission of peace in the name of Cow. I come in peace in the name of Cow. <laughs> Just then, he's stopped by Tara, who really should get back to the set of Beastmaster. Space car! Tara's sharing some lunch with the priest that they cooked on this highly futuristic space Weber grill. Um, ouch. Gonna need a crowbar to get that thing out. The little people are mugworts. Tara's telling the priest about how they discovered the acid pools on the planet. One of them decided to wash his face in one of the craters. Stripped him clean to the skull. <laughs> Ain't that right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you think it's funny that one of us died horribly. One of the Mogwarts brings out some valuable crystals they mined. The priest responds to their hospitality by trying to steal them. Here come the worst, most evil, vile scum on the planet. The tax collectors. The leader of the bad guys, Bantor, his assistant, Krago, and the henchman, Garth. I guess this is what he did after Wayne's World. Krago looks like he just returned from CBGB's. The group's wandering around looking for people to tax. Is it me, or is Bantor's chest armor just a cast of Krego's face? The bad guys find the priest, and since he won't give up his crystals, they kill him. Tara jogs in and tries to hightail it out of there. That bosom is being held in with spirit gum and hope. Tara sneaks around and takes out some of the bad guys. This scene is very important. After killing all the bad guys, including Garth, she runs into Bantor. Bantor taunts her and takes her down pretty easy. Hey, Garth lived! Why is he holding his head, though? Tara hit him in the back with an axe. Tara manages to fight off Bantor and dunks his hand in acid. Chapter 2, Star Slammer. Ladies and gentlemen, John Carradine. Well, at least he's not talking to bees. For the crime of smothering Bantor's hand in raspberry preserves, the High Council old guy sentences Tara to space prison. Tara is waking up in the prison ship vehemence. I am the warden. Welcome to prison ship. I'm sorry, now it's just prison ship. Warden Xene is making an announcement to the new arrivals. This is absolutely Ilsa in space. Is there some unwritten rule that in B-movies, female prison wardens have to wear bondage gear? Tara wakes up in his cell with the other prisoners. Um, excuse me, is this the casting for Psycho Sluts from Hell? The girls introduce themselves to Tara. KK, welcome aboard. Oh, hi! Nice to meet- Oof. Stace then does her Homer Simpson impersonation. I believe we've met before. Why, you <gasps> oh. The leader of the inmates introduces herself. My friends here call me Mike. Mike? The head of security, Muffin, shows up to meet the new inmate. That outfit probably looked better on paper. Now it's time for the obligatory nude scene. 
I like how her prison uniform is actually less revealing than her normal clothes. Muffin tells Tara she wasn't listening to her parents, and she used a Red Rider BB gun. Uh, Muffin, you didn't quite put that on right. Eh, ah, never mind. Meanwhile, the warden is enjoying the littlest luchadore. Who says wrestling is fake? The inmates are in line for lunch. Mmm, delicious ear jello. If this is so gross, why don't they eat some of this delicious pie over here? The TV turns on, and it's their favorite show, Dark Star. Tara then arrives for lunch. Seems like overkill to have this entire prison ship for, like, what, 20 inmates? Why is Tara's uniform white while everyone else's is gray? Just then, the fight goes back and forth for a while until Tara hits Mike with a TV dinner tray. The warden then shows up in full bondage gear. This face is pretty much my reaction. Since they want to fight, the warden orders them to the arena. Chapter 3, Arena of Death. Well, that sounds nice. Hey, this isn't an arena, those are stocks. The girls then get spanked or whipped or... I can't tell what this sound is supposed to be. <gasps> oh. They're then brought into the arena to fight. Oh, come on, that's the monster from the Deadly Spawn. The ladies fight the monster by backing up and looking scared. Finally, they team up and electrocute it. This annoys the Warden. The Warden then takes a call from the Sovereign and the, uh, Bride of Frankenstein. Mike finds a harmonica and proceeds to be insufferable. Tara is then attacked by a rubber rat puppet. Back in the rest area, the other prisoners are dance fighting. Tara and Mike return from the shortest time spent in solitary ever. Bantor crashes the party with his new robot hand. He taunts the girls and leaves. Wow, Krago's dressed so normal I almost didn't recognize him. Back on the planet, Reused footage from Buck Rogers. Oops. Over in the space lab, Dr. Poe is working with food coloring. Wait, who's this guy? Why is he wearing the helmet from Skyrim? The doctor invented some new portable lobotomy device. Silly doctor, we already have those. That night... Attention, androids Howard, Fine, and Howard. Report to the service depot for your biannual loop job. Normally movies throw in a Three Stooges reference in hospital scenes. The henchmen abduct Mike. This must be some super effective chloroform if she doesn't even have to inhale it. The guy drops her off so the doctor can get to work. The warden then invites him to her chambers to install something. Bantor is talking to his assistant. We must purge ourselves, Krago. Hey! Lego my Krago! Krago then helps Bantor to purge the demons. The next day, the girls are wondering what happened to Mike. I'm just itching to cut somebody. Not surprisingly, the ginger wants to cut somebody. Okay, this is the Krago, I know. The warden shows up with a freshly lobotomized mic. Muffin finds space drugs in Squeaker's room, so she has the guards take her away. Turns out Mike wasn't really lobotomized, and Muffin overacts into another dimension. Well, I see they didn't remove enough of your brains. Your mouth still seems to be getting your ass into trouble. The ladies then reenact the fight from Beat It. Mike removes her hand and finishes her off. Aw, oh, Muffin. One of the other inmates uses a sharpened dinner plate to brain Krago. The ladies then make a plan to get weapons, kill the warden, and get off the ship. Bye, ladies. Chapter 4, Jailbreak 3000. Bantor kidnaps the doctor. Tara goes to the doctor's office to see she's missing. Since there's a lull in the action, they insert some random nudity. So, she just happened to find a clean shirt with her prisoner number on it? Tara goes to rescue the doctor, but gets stopped by the warden. The warden tries to shoot her, but the doctor stops her. Some of the prisoners run into the guards. Can nobody shoot straight? Tara faces off with Bantor and Garth. I'm not sure what's worse. His aim, or her reaction time? She shoots Garth and runs away. The ladies run into one of the guards, and Tara very slowly takes him out. Mike goes after a guard and forgets how guns work. Maybe it's out of ammo? Oh, never mind. The girls then escape using footage from Battle Beyond the Stars. They got a lot of mileage out of these. Bantor's chasing the ladies, but his ship's been disabled by the rat puppet. Tara then blows him up. The girls then celebrate victory. Coming up next... The adventures of Tara continue on Chain Gang Planet. Aw oh man, I gotta go order this.
Oh. Oh, no. Star Slammer was filmed in California on a budget of around $200,000. The movie had an interesting evolution. Director Fred Olin Ray was shooting a film called Biohazard. He was shooting on sets built for Roger Corman that was recently used in the film Space Raiders, which if you saw my video, you know they were used in a few other Corman films. Ray rented the sets for some additional days to shoot footage of women escaping from prison. The thought was that he could present the footage to a producer as a proof of concept for another film. Ray was talking to producer Jack H. Harris, whose last film was the big budget disappointment, Eyes of Laura Mars. Harris liked working with up-and-coming directors, so he agreed to produce Star Slammer, although Star Slammer went through multiple names, which was shown in the beginning of the film. He made the deal with Harris a few days after he made a deal for his movie The Tomb. He'd shoot The Tomb first, then move to Star Slammer with many of the same cast and crew. For the tomb, they hired Dawn Wildsmith, largely because she was the only actress willing to lie naked in a bed of live snakes. They brought her back for Star Slammer. The patch over her eye was a piece of vegetable strainer. Ray knew John Carradine was looking for work, so he hired him to play the brief part of the High Councilman. Harris had produced John Carpenter's Dark Star, so they were able to reuse that footage here. Actually, they reused a lot for this movie. Footage from Dark Star. Sets from Space Raiders. Footage from Battle Beyond the Stars. Vantor's armor was from Metal Storm. The guard's armor was from Galaxy of Terror. The monster was from The Deadly Spawn. The torture chamber was from The Lost Empire. The Land Rover was from Logan's Run, the TV series. Footage from Buck Rogers. And here I thought Star Raiders was a Franken film. Even the music was borrowed. Harris's son wrote jingles for TV commercials, so he had Ray reuse his music for the film. He was particularly fond of the one that was an obvious ripoff of Raiders of the Lost Ark theme, so that became the Star Slammer theme. The Planet Arrows was an homage to the brain from Planet Arrows. The part I thought was pointless nudity really had a point. After Mike fights Muffin, she gets blood all over Tara. Her prison escape scenes after this were filmed before it, so they had to have her change shirts in order to keep the continuity. Also to sneak in some more boobs, but at least there was a reason. Ray worked with Michael Sonny on the tomb, and he brought him back to write and star in Star Slammer. Ray was a big fan of the old film serials, which is why this movie had chapters. He also hoped to be able to make a sequel. He had Sonny write the script for the sequel, but it never happened. Peter George worked on the film as a production assistant. After filming was over, he inherited a decent amount of money. With that, he took some of the cast and crew to make his own film, Surf Nazis. Troma picked it up for distribution, but didn't like the title, so they called it Surf Nazis Must Die. The Wrestler, the Alien, and the Young Inquisitor were all played by Chris Ray, the director's son. Fred Olin Ray was a single father at the time, and had Chris on set every day when he wasn't in school. He put him in the movie to give him something to do. Chris Olin Ray grew up and served seven years in the U.S. Navy, and is now a director and producer in a variety of films. Bigger budgeted films like The First Purge, and lower budgeted stuff like Two-Headed Shark Attack. Star Slammer, like most of Ray's films, was a good time. Sure, they borrowed from a few sources. Okay, they borrowed from a lot of sources, but it's still able to stand on its own. What stands out most for me is the Battle Beyond the Stars footage, but that's mostly because I've been on a Corman sci-fi binge lately. Sandy Brook was quite good as Tara, and I'm sad they weren't able to do the sequel. She did a few movies after this. Terror on Alcatraz, One Way Out from Paul Kirazi, Nightmare Sisters from David Dakota, and Deep Space from Fred Olin Ray. After that, she left the industry. Ross Hagen was great as Bantor, but Dawn Wildsmith steals the show as Muffin. Every scene, she's given 200%. Dookie Flyswatter himself, Michael Sonny, was terrific as always. I just wish she had more screen time in this. Star Slammer. It's the cast of the tomb and surf Nazis in space fighting an evil dominatrix warden. Although after seeing this, I'm reminded of how much we need the tomb on Blu-ray. Code Red? Shout Factory? Kino Lorber? Vinegar Syndrome? Get on this, you guys! They didn't remove enough of your brains. Your mouth still seems to be getting your ass into trouble.